Well, good morning, Jim Sunderworth from my swing. We're talking about a very, very important thing. We're talking about the Ten Commandments. We're talking about the Ten Commandments. And that's an amazing thing because they're the most wonderful uh, words that we'll ever really hear to really help us get along in life. Now, it doesn't save us because it just shows us that we're sinners. It shows us what sin is. It shows us the fact that we can't, but we are so thankful that Jesus came and he could do it. He kept every one of them, did not sin, did not have sin in him because he had the seed of God himself in him. And we're, we're thankful for that. But anyway, so the Ten Commandments, the first one that he said, we, we spoke about it a few days ago, but it says, he said, and I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before you there well there goes oh man there goes two two planes and they're cool wow hear them <laughs> they're really neat they look like vintage vintage uh, get, let's get back to the commandments <laughs> anyway so he said thou shall have no other gods before me now there's plenty of gods out there i'm telling you there are gods everywhere you can worship a lot of stuff you can worship pleasure you can worship money you can worship a position you can worship people you can worship cars you can worship a lot of stuff but here, here's the thing you got to understand god wants you to know that he, he wants him first because you see other gods will fail you they'll fail you and God wants us to have these laws. He wants us to have these, these commandments because in those commandments, there's freedom. In him, we live, move, and have our being. And as we're in God, in, in Christ, in that being, then and serving him and him alone, we're free. There's no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who is our God, who's the one we serve with all, with all of our hearts. We say, Lord Jesus, I want to seek first your kingdom. I want to seek first your desires because God knows if we go outside of that we're going to be extremely extremely disappointed well just for instance you know in the old testament in first kings 18 18 we talk about elijah comes on the scene and there israel ahab and jezebel they're serving wicked gods they're serving uh gods that that uh, baal and, and all these different gods that were uh, were, were wrong they they didn't do a thing they were dead gods but somehow they got the people to serve them well elijah comes on the scene and he says, listen, in First Kings 18, 18, he says, listen, let's just, let's just have a challenge here. And they said, whoever answers by fire, we're going to serve. Now, listen, there had been a, there had been a, 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 a famine because there had been no rain for, for such a long time, years and years. And finally, the, he says, let's just see who's God, who's God is alive. Well, they put the, they put the sacrifice together and they, uh, they called out to their gods. Baal, they called out their gods, Asherus, they called out all these gods, and you know what, there was um, nothing, nothing, and and <laughs> if you read that in, in that area, I mean, <laughs> Elijah makes fun of them, says he must be on a trip, he must be having supper, he must be doing something else, he must be, he, he, they said all kinds of things about the guy, I mean, he mocked them, Elijah mocked them, well, they worked all day, they cut themselves, they danced, they screamed, they yelled, did everything to their god, but listen, when it really comes down to need, when it really comes down to it, does your God really hear? Does your God really answer? Is the God you serve alive and well? Listen, we know ours is because Jesus is alive and well because he hears and he answers prayer. Well, Elijah called out. He said, pour some water on that. And what they needed more than anything was water. It hadn't had rain for years. Pour some, pour some water on it. So they poured water on it. And Elijah prayed just a simple prayer. God, show them your God. And I'm doing this because you want me to do it. You can read about it. And when that happened, fire fell from heaven. Bam! Consumed the sacrifice, consumed the water, and it wasn't long after that that the rain came. Why? Because God's alive. You see, you don't have, why would you have any other thing, inanimate object, even if it's a person? A person is can't do any more than you can actually do. Maybe they're a little smarter, maybe they have a little bit more access to funds or power or something like that. But when it comes to sickness and death, they can't do a thing for you. Only God, the God you serve. I am so thankful today. <laughs> that we serve a God that um, is greater than any other God. Remember in Samuel when they stole the covenant, or they sold the, the uh, they captured the, the Ark of the Covenant, and they went over to the Philistines, and they put their God before Dagon, their, that, that, that covenant, that, that uh, the um, Ark of the Covenant before him, and they woke up the next morning, and the gods had fallen over, their hands were broken. They couldn't do anything. They got boils because of it. 
they took that they took that covenant which represented the living God and they sent it back they said we don't want anything to do with it let me tell you what when you come up against the real the living God God knows that that that's where your purpose is and that's where your chances of, of life is and that's where it's really all about serving don't have any other gods before you don't serve anything else other than a living God who said I love you I've got a plan for your life and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the best because I want the best for you as a living God he's living life <laughs> resurrected from the dead his name is jesus he brings us into the father by the power of the holy spirit oh i could go on and on but i better not i'll talk to you tomorrow bye